In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to lose those last five to 10 pounds, which is very challenging if you are a shorter individual. So keep watching, I got you covered, let's get into it. Oh, wait, before we dive in, please make sure that you're following this channel, like it, subscribe, leave a comment so I can keep bringing awesome content just like this for you. And as a thank you, you can click below to download my 52 awesome metabolic workouts that are guarantees to torch fat, help you get stronger and save you time in the gym. All you gotta do is enter your email address below and you will get a copy sent right to your inbox. No spam, no nothing like that. I've been about five foot 10 for most of my life. Uh, once I hit puberty, I hit that height. I was a chubby kid. As I got taller, I just got really, really skinny. My wife, however, is five foot and I hear her talk about it all the time. Her Biggest pet peeve probably is like people trying to pick her up, which happened more when we were in college and people were drinking. Uh, and also that certain clothes just don't fit her the right way just based off her height. And that when she needs to lose weight or wants to lose weight, it's actually pretty challenging for her. And I won't disagree, it can be hard because when you think about it, someone who's taller is going to have more mass, right? More muscle mass, they can even have more more fat on their body, but technically because they are a larger individual, their metabolism actually sits higher. Shorter in size you are, the less mass you are actually going to have, which means your metabolism is actually going to be lower. So when you decrease your body weight, your metabolism slows down, and which makes things complicated. So what we can think of it as is, we wanna find a way to lose weight in a sustainable manner, but doesn't have us having like tiny bird portions of food, which is the idea. For that, I've done a great example here with my fine drawing skills, and I think you can see it, but if you can't see it, I'll fix it in post-production. So we have two examples here that are gonna really help to illustrate this. We have Carl, who is six foot four and 250 pounds. And we have Kim, who is five foot and 130 pounds. In this example, I wanna illustrate this. So here's the magic formula you can really use if you wanna lose weight. What you can do is you can do goal body weight times 13 or 12 and goal body weight times 11 or 10. Let me explain. What you can do and what a lot of my clients have been doing lately and finding a lot of success with is doing almost like a automatic version of calorie cycling. They'll have four to five days a week where they're in a lower calorie day, and then two to three days a week where they are at a higher calorie day. So it might look like this. Uh, let's say it's Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. They are having a higher calorie day. Two of those days are workout days. One of those days is the weekend, so they want a little more wiggle room. And then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday are their lower calorie days because they can be more dialed in, they find it easier. When you have that sort of calorie cycling going on, you're actually on a total weekly deficit anyway because you're using your goal body weight. So if you're in a deficit and you're in a little bit bigger of a deficit, you'll find you lose weight faster, but this is a way to make it more sustainable so you're not absolutely torturing yourself with being very low calorie all the time. So use 13 or 11 if you are a younger, more active individual. If you are not an active individual, someone who is sedentary all the time or who is older, I would use 12 and 10. Those tend to be the numbers that work best for that sort of individual, just because you're not moving as much, which doesn't allow you to have that increase in metabolism. So Carl's six foot four. Now Carl weighs 250 pounds. He wants to lose 15 pounds. He wants to weigh 235 pounds. So if we were to use this magic formula, his high calorie day, which would be two to three days a week, would be 3,055 calories. Now that's again, 235 times 13. His lower calorie days would be 200, 2,585 calories. So that is 235 times 11. If he switches it up and he's pretty consistent, he will lose those 15 pounds. And 15 pounds on Carl will look very different, right? He could look pretty lean. He could have uh, more broad shoulders. We don't really know what kind of training he's doing right now, but we're gonna say he's doing a little bit of strength, conditioning, zone two cardio, all the nice things. 
Now, if we look at Kim over here, Kim also wants to lose 15 pounds. She wants to be 115 pounds at five foot, which is pretty healthy. Nothing crazy about that. But for Kim to lose that much weight, her high day would only be $14.95, which would be two to three days a week, and her low day would be $1,265. Now, to be honest, when you are a smaller person, eating in the 12, 12 to 1400 calorie range is not too crazy because you are a smaller individual. However, it can be very challenging to do that if you're not used to eating like that and it can feel like a big difference. Here's the crazy thing. Carl wants to lose 15 pounds. Kim wants to lose 15 pounds. Look at the huge difference in calories for them to be able to do that. For Carl, it's going to be pretty easy. Easy is relative, but it's going to be easier for him on those lower calorie days because 2,500 calories is not that crazy, right? But for for Kim, 12, uh, a little above 1,200 calories can feel like a lot. So we need to consider this. Number one, the way you can work on this is Make sure you're using a calorie range. Don't just try to hit one specific number. Hitting one specific number makes life a lot harder. And if you are a perfectionist, which a lot of people trying to lose weight usually are, you're more likely to quit if you're slightly over or you're slightly under. So what we want to think about is adding plus or minus 100 calories to each of these numbers. So it would be from 1,165 to, to 1,365, right? It would be uh, 1,395 to 1,595, giving yourself a range because some days you'll be slightly over, some days you'll be slightly under. But as long as we stick to these things, you will lose weight. They will both lose weight. Now, the rate at which they lose weight will be different because for, for Carl, sticking with this is going to be a lot easier for him. Um, he can still eat quite a bit of food, right? For Kim, it's going to be more challenging because this is going to be a big reduction from where she currently is eating. Now, the secret here is we want to figure out how we can do this. There are two options. The first option is just kind of going for it, right? We, we're not hitting a check mark. We are just going for it. As in, Kim will stay and Carl will stay in this calorie range with these high and low days until they hit their goal weight. So until she hits 115 pounds, she will continue to stay within these numbers, which maybe the first, I'll say the first 10 pounds will be easier for her. And then when she's more lean, when she's like 120 pounds, it's gonna be harder for her to lose those last five. So staying in this particular range for an extended long period of time is going to be harder. And also maybe they do lose the weight, but then they gain it back because they are, increasing the amount of calories they're eating and it's frustrating for them and they don't know, right? There are all these different scenarios. So what we could do besides option A, which is just sticking with it, is we can do more of what Jordan Sia calls it this and I really like it, the the punch, punch, jab or jab, jab, punch, whatever it is, a jab. A jab deficit works like this. We would be in our deficit for four weeks. So the first four weeks we would be in this deficit. Right, We would be low days at 12.65 and high days at 14.95. Then uh, for weeks four through eight, we would be up at closer towards maintenance. So maintenance calories here, what you could do is you could actually multiply your current body weight times 13 or 14, and that will actually give you closer to your maintenance where you are. Um, and that's what you would stick to for that month. So there wouldn't be higher low days. I would just have them stick with that calorie range for, for maintenance. You'd be there for a month. Now at that time, the benefits of being closer to maintenance, the benefits of being closer to maintenance is that you'll have an increase in energy, you'll increase the amount of carbohydrates you're most likely eating, which will make it easier for you to have more energy for working out. You'll find that your strength training sessions improve. You'll find it's easier to put on a little bit more muscle. And then you'll go again into that uh, bigger deficit the following month. So week eight through 12, you go back into that deficit. And then what you find is that as you start to lose that body fat, you're increasing your muscle mass and things tend to work out a little bit better. And you will continue that pattern. Now, here's the caveat. It's going to take Kim a longer amount of time to lose the weight she wants to lose. However, is it better to lose it all really fast and not be able to sustain it and to be miserable all the time? Or is it better to take a, a little bit longer but to do it in a more sustainable way where we're building more muscle mass? So that definition, you'll have that toned look you'll be able to have more energy, your sleep will be better, all these pluses, right? So 
It's not about how fast you're doing it. It's about how consistent and how sustainable it is from what you're doing. Carl, he's fine. He's fine with sticking with that deficit. But this version of the jab is going to be very, very helpful. Now, some other things that you can do to ensure that you are losing weight. These are big. Please don't skip over this part of the video. I need you to understand this. Steps. You don't want to skip that on your steps. Like we talked about, Kim and Carl, they are exercising, they're doing all the right things. They're dialing in on their, on their steps, right? That's the big one. We need to increase our activity level during the day. Now, general activity level, the only reason I pick steps is because it's something you can easily track, right? You can wear a step counter, you can use your watch, whatever it is. Uh, you could use your phone and you would be able to see, okay, I'm only taking 2,000 steps per day. I need to get that up. Right? And then you can challenge yourself. You can increase it over time. But the goal is to hit about 7,500 steps per day and up. When you're hitting 7,500 steps per day, that's when you start to see all the benefits of a reduction in all-cause mortality. You'll start to sleep better at night. You'll find that there's also a relationship between getting outside and moving your body and like your, your general well-being from a mental standpoint. Now, what if you can't hit 7,500 steps per day, but you also like, you like to bike, you're like, great. All of it counts. If you're doing zone two cardio and you're doing that on the bike or you're walking on a treadmill or you're using the elliptical or one of my clients even has like a little recumbent bike that, that sits under her desk that she likes to use, that all counts towards your daily movement. So you could just put it in that bucket. But again, 7,500 is what we want to work up to. Uh, Kim and Carl also are really, really good about hitting their protein goal. See, the thing that, that fucks you up is when you go into a deficit, especially if you're like Kim and you're on the smaller side, you're probably not eating enough protein, which makes it really hard for you to stay to that low deficit. Because if you're not eating enough protein, you're probably eating more highly palatable things. And that's making it harder for you to one, hit your calorie goal, right? You're probably going over and two, you're hungry all the time. Not what we want. So hitting a protein goal is going to be great. Now, for people who have never done this before, I recommend trying to hit at least 100 grams of protein. That is not an arbitrary number. That's usually where most protein goals will start um, because if I give you a number and let's say, I, I, I like to use uh, either goal body weight times anywhere from 0.7 to one gram per pound of goal body weight. So let's say we'll use, we'll, use, uh, we'll use Carl as the example. Let's say I just tell Carl he has to eat 250 grams of protein and he's try tracking and he's eaten about 40 grams. Well, jumping up to 250 is going to be a lot. Kim, she's never tracked before in her life either. And she finds that she's having about 55 grams per day. Well, telling her that she has to suddenly jump up to 115 grams can feel like a lot and it can be overwhelming. And you usually say, fuck it. You can focus on all my friends who are a little shorter is aim for about hundred grams and try to front load your day with as much protein as possible. Like aim for at least 40 grams of protein that you have consumed by 1 p.m. That's an easy way to look at it. 40 grams of protein can work out to about like two palmfuls of protein um, morning and before lunch. One palmful is about 20 to 30 grams of protein. We're gonna, we're gonna put it on the smaller side and say it's about 20 grams of protein. So at least two palmfuls before you have your lunch in which you can hit another palmful, which would be another 20, 20 grams of protein there, you're at 60 grams, and then you can do another one before dinner and then another one before bed if you wanna have some sort of protein-based snack. That's one way you can divide it up. But again, to have an exact number, if 100 grams you're hitting it and it's feeling good for you, to have an exact number, you would do your goal body weight times either 0.7 all the way up to one gram per pound of goal body weight, and that'll give you a nice range. As long as you're hitting that range within five to 10 grams, you're golden. The next thing I would focus on is fiber. An increase in fiber has a direct relationship to reduced all-cause mortality, but also helps you go to the bathroom and helps you stay full. Helping you stay full is going to be really big when your deficit is small, like you have this, this very small number of calories you're trying to hit because you're gonna be hungry. But if we fill up on protein and fibrous carbohydrates, which tend to be lower in calorie, you're gonna be able to stick to your deficit and you're also going to be full or as close to full as possible. Remember, your goal 
Learning a deficit isn't to eat as little as possible, it's to eat as much as possible while staying in your deficit. So fibrous foods can be really, really helpful. Um, for women, we aim generally to about 25 grams per day. That's like a goal. And for men, we can average about up to 36 grams, 38 grams. Like that, that's general rule of thumb. If you're going from having absolute zero fiber, you're gonna to wanna to increase slowly versus jumping in right away. Uh, because if you jump in right away, you're gonna find you get constipated. So ease yourself in over time. So that's number two is fiber. And if you don't know where to get started with fiber, below I've linked to my article, it's 30 high fiber foods. Click, read it, apply it. The next thing that Kim and Carl are really working on too is they're increasing the amount of water they're drinking. They're trying to get an extra glass of water per day. Basically, that's removing a caloric beverage that they're drinking. Drinking your calories tends to make it a little bit harder to lose weight, specifically because you're usually unaware and because it is a liquid, it's easier to overconsume. So what you can do is start trying to increase the amount of water you're having. A good way to increase the amount of water is to just aim for half your body weight in ounces of water. And a nice way you can kind of set yourself up for that is like have a 10 ounce glass of water first thing in the morning when you wake up. Uh, doing that is gonna set you in motion to keep hitting that water throughout the day. Another helpful thing could just be have a bottle and just aim to fill it up as many times as you can. The other one you're really gonna to wanna to focus on is your sleep, all right? If you're not getting at least six hours or more of sleep per night, you're gonna find that losing weight becomes hard. Number one, because you are going to see an increase in stress Increase in stress causes you to hold on to more water. But the other side of it is, when you have not enough sleep, you'll find that your leptin and ghrelin get all wacky. Leptin and ghrelin are the hunger and fullness hormones. Uh, it, it basically means the later you stay up, the easier it's going to be for you to eat highly palatable foods. And then the next day, you eat highly palatable foods as well, because your ability to control that just won't be there because you're exhausted. And if you have kids, you're already exhausted anyway. So why not try to increase the amount you're sleeping? So getting at least six plus hours of sleep per night is gonna be really helpful. And look, I have a, a toddler. Um, my wife and I are expecting our next one in May. I fucking know how much it sucks to not be able to get as much sleep as possible. In that case, try to sneak in some naps when the kids nap, you know, all those tips and tricks out there for sleep. But you're gonna to wanna to increase the amount you're sleeping. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that we're also doing some form of resistance training or strength training at least two to three times per week. Lifting weights will help you build muscle. Building muscle is important during a fat loss phase. If we're trying to lose weight and we're not building muscle, there are some downsides to that. Uh, one is you could actually reduce your muscle mass while you are in a deficit, and that's not good because as you get older, you're already going to reduce your muscle mass. If you're going through menopause, you're gonna be reducing muscle mass, increasing the likelihood of osteoporosis, all of those things. So number one is we wanna preserve the muscle mass we have. Number two, we wanna build muscle mass because if we are building muscle while we're losing weight, we're actually gonna see that toned, defined look that everyone's actually after in the first place. And number three, is we are also going to be doing weight bearing activity, which improves our bone mass, uh, something else that we tend to lose as we get older. Also, technically, technically speaking, an increase in muscle mass can allow you to burn a few extra calories throughout the day. But if you actually think about it and do the math, it, it comes out to be maybe around the size of a small apple. It's not that much. We shouldn't be exercising with the goal of eating more, but building muscle mass and having that long-term health benefit from it is a totally great reason to be adding some resistance training. Same thing with zone two cardio. Doing cardio can be another cool way to go about having heart health benefits. Now, do I believe you should exercise to lose fat? No. However, if you're someone who is like shorter in stature, again, Kim is like five foot, she's trying to lose those last five pounds, let's say she's down to 20, 120 pounds, but she's having a hard time. Increasing her zone two cardio is an easy way to technically use enough energy during the day so that she can be in a deficit even though she's eating a little bit more. So let's say she's having a day where she eats like 1500 calories, but she doesn't wanna eat that much because, because it puts, she could just do like an extra zone two session, nothing too crazy. And it's something that bodybuilders have been doing for 
years upon years upon years doing a little bit. You don't have to do two hours. You can do a 30 minute session. You can listen to your audiobook, And the benefit of that is you're working on your heart health too. Uh, that's where the benefit of zone two cardio comes in. Um, but again, I don't recommend people try to work out to burn fat. What I am saying though, is if you are a person who is smaller in size and you're trying to lose those last five pounds, adding some zone two cardio in will be only a benefit at this point. It will just benefit you in the long run too for your overall recovery between training sessions as well. We've got make sure you're hitting protein, make sure you're hitting fiber, make sure you're getting enough water, make sure you're being active, make sure you're lifting weights, make sure you're getting sleep, make sure you're doing your cardio. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go with those are all the big ones you really need to be covering. It doesn't matter how tall or short you are. If you're not doing any of those things, you're going to really struggle with losing weight. That's just a fact of the matter. All of the things we covered in this video is going to help you get where you want to go. Now, this last one is really, really, really important. Like this is the most important one I could possibly tell you. And that's why I saved it for last. You can't expect it to happen in 30 days. You can't expect it to happen in 90 days. Any sort of change you want to make to your body is going to take a long time. And if you give yourself like a year, imagine how much change you can make that's actually sustainable. That actually allows you to get where you want to go. That actually allows Kim to lose that weight, get to 115 pounds, but then be comfortable with floating around 115 to 120 pounds to 125 pounds floating in that area. Because when you lose weight and you do it in a sustainable way, and you can work on other behaviors, you know, like your emotional eating, your stress levels, your sleep, when you can work on all those other areas of your life, you'll always be able to lose that weight again, right? You'll always have that skill in your back pocket. But if you're not giving yourself the opportunity to practice and make mistakes and, and try to figure things out again, well, then you're always going to be chasing the same weight. No one is the same weight the entire year. No one's the same weight every single day. Your weight is meant to fluctuate. The other cool thing about Kim that I forgot to mention, because she's practicing being at maintenance every other month, she's actually getting really good at what real life is. Real life is being at maintenance. Real life is not being in a deficit. Being at maintenance and understanding like, oh, wow, I can maybe one day a week practice eating intuitively. And what I mean by this is you're, in a, you're tracking your calories and then one day per week you test yourself to see like, okay, yeah, I can kind of guesstimate and be pretty spot on, pretty close. I mean, one of my clients sent me a message and we've been tracking pretty, pretty diligently. Uh, that was a big goal in 2023 for her. And she's been quizzing herself. She's been putting everything on her plate, guessing how much the calories would be or the grams, and then weighing it out. And she's only been like maybe two, three, four grams off. So that just goes to show like intuitive eating isn't something we do necessarily to lose weight. It's a skill. It's a skill that you can practice once you've been tracking for a while. Tracking is a great tool to help you get a better understanding of that. And being at maintenance is something you should definitely practice before you just try to uh, end your diet, right? That's the idea. We need to practice existing in reality. We need to be comfortable with our weight fluctuating. And we need to know that we always have the skills to get back to where we wanna go. Be sure that you are subscribed, that you have notifications turned on, that you leave a comment below, give a thumbs up if you like the video, and I'll keep bringing more videos like this to you to help you get a better understanding of your nutrition and your fitness and to uncomplicate all of this shit. Also, look, if you comment below, <clears throat> if you comment below and you want me to help you figure out your macros, just say, hey, can you help me out? And I will help you get started with finding what your macros are so you can lose weight. Um, all you have to do is comment below with help and I'll get you started. So without further ado, let me tell you, you're one day away from getting back on track and one day away from realizing how fucking amazing you are.